Welcome to the FNO InsureTech Podcast, a place where movers and shakers from all points within the insurance ecosystem gather and discuss all things InsureTech. We talk about how technology and innovation are affecting and driving change in the industry. Here are your hosts, Lee Boyd and Rob Beller. Hey, podcast world. Welcome to another remarkable, incredible, foundational, important episode of, if we say so ourselves, <laughs> important episode of FNO InsureTech. Did yeah. I get it right? Did, did I say all yeah. that right, Lee? Yeah, yeah, you kind of went off script there, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, really? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to, you mean I'm supposed to read this thing that you give me every week? Foundational. We're, uh, yeah, trend setting. We're trend setters. Uh, we are. We're jet setters and trend setters. Hey, Rob, this is the first podcast we've done together in a while. I know, I've missed you. Yeah, this is uh, this is exciting. It's Every- nice to be back to the old routine. We got the whole the whole gang back together. I've been away. You haven't been away. No, I've so, been right here. Uh huh. Uh huh. How were the trips? Were they nice? I had a great trip. Had a great vacation on the river. Last week I was in. Well, last week I did a podcast without you. You did? Yeah, I was not there. From a, a live remote from yeah. Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. That was a great podcast. Shout out to Josh Thompson. That was yeah. a great podcast. Oh, it was? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, so we published it last week, I think. <laughs> Anyways, all that to say, our, our hearts go out to the people of, of Louisiana and Mississippi, too. This was the week that Hurricane Ida hit and packed quite a wallop to Louisiana. And we were busy working in Louisiana for alacrity, spread out all over the state, and wish you all the best. So today, we have a very interesting guest. Yeah. A homegrown insure tech. We do. We do. We have Trace Meek on today. He's a CEO and founder of Fetch. It's a underwriting company. It allows insurance agents to quickly and accurately find the right company for the right policy. And he's he's great at explaining exactly what it is. So I don't want to I don't want to take over that, but it's this data source that's sortable and filterable and you can go down and find the right the right company for your risk. Uh, so it, it, it's a fascinating product and it's been around for a few years and I think it's a, a a big game changer. And like like we'll talk on the podcast, it's a very straightforward idea, super practical and to the people that use it, really important. And uh, so we wanted to have Trace on and hear all about it and how he founded it. So if you are a listener, you have any involvement in underwriting or independent agents, I think you'll enjoy this. So without further ado, why don't we get to our interview with Trace Meek, founder and CEO of Fetch. Hey, everybody. We are here with our very special guest coming to us from Florida. Is that correct? That is correct. Tampa Bay area, Tampa, where Bay. I think you know most of our sports teams win. Yeah, win games. Are, I guess that you was, are quite good at sports. I'm I'm really happy with that with that little intro that I just did there for you. Huh? Yeah, that was great. Uh, that was. I great. think it's just and, just just hockey. You would think you know a hockey team in Florida. Yeah, you know? who would have ever thought? <laughs> <laughs> We're here with Trace Meek, the CEO and founder of Fetch. And no, it's not a pet insurance company, like you might be thinking. Yeah. Uh, it is. Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to let Trace tell you what it is. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Lee and Rob, for having us on. Really appreciate you inviting me and, and being a part of this. So I'm excited to spread the word about Fetch, which is not a pet insurance product. Let's just take one little sidetrack here. An experienced podcaster. That's right. Here's here's your plug opportunity. Two times. Times two. Yeah. So two. I, I started a podcast a couple years ago with my son, my nine-year-old son, and it's called Can You Guess It? So just uh, Google it out there. Look on iTunes. Pod, all, all those platforms are out there. But the two of us list 10 facts about something. You have to guess what it is. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. a spinoff of the, the, the annoying game of 20 questions in the car. Kind of reversed engineered it a little. 
if this podcast doesn't really intrigue you, you can just stop and go over to that. Go over right? and guess something. Yeah. yeah. But at least wait till I'm done with my, my bar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it usually goes downhill once our guest is off. Okay. <laughs> Let's get started down the yeah. road with Fetch and tell us what the heck is Fetch, what do you do, and what your products are. So let me give you the back history of how it even was created. Please. I'm an insurance agent, third generation. My grandfather started in 1954. Uh, When I came into the industry, well, come to the industry, came into my office, you know, we were were a pretty big agency. I was like, oh, I'm going to hit the ground running with all the great technology. Uh, This is about 2009. Uh, I walk in and we are still a paper office. We had over 10,000 paper files from floor to ceiling, wall to wall. And uh, it, it, it was a bit of a shock. I, I didn't even know what a management system really was in the world of insurance. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to take all these files and I'm going to make it uh, digital. I'm going to scan them all and I'm going to get it done within a year. Well, it took us three years to do it. And uh, but now we're a paperless office. But it, it is interesting to see even in the year 2009 that uh, or even today in 2021, right, that agencies are still paper. So and uh, sure. Sure. That, that was kind of my first experience with the frustration of the industry. So about three years ago, I was training for a master swim meet. I'm a distance swimmer. Cool. And uh, I get out of the pool and uh, dry off. We were getting ready to go to dinner and I was walking along and I stepped on a pipe, just a little pipe sticking out of the ground, rolled my left foot and broke my fifth metatarsal. Ouch. Ow. So I was actually with a friend of mine that's an orthopedic surgeon. He said, sit down, Trace, let me look at it. And he starts pushing it. Yeah. Well, I know. I, I don't know if that was an omen or I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. But he starts sticking his thumb into where it's broken and it's like crackling, right? Ooh. And you're like, I'm like, you know, that hurts. And I go, do you think I can swim tomorrow? He goes, no, you can't swim tomorrow. I go, well, can I swim next month in the meet? And he goes, Trace, you're not going to be able to walk on this probably for a couple months. Wow. So the next day I'm laying on the couch, iced up the foot, got it resting. And I called to the wife. I said, uh, dear, can you bring me a beer? Right. Sounds logical. What else am I going to do? She goes, dear, it's 9 a.m. I go, what am I going to do with my time? I go, I, I think I'm just going to start up drinking in the mornings, make it make it a little easier on myself. And she goes, there's got to be something better now that you've kind of can take a deep breath, right? So sometimes there's a positive in what happens. Now that you've taken things, you have to take things a little slower now. You can't be running around. What What do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm in the office and every day I hear this banter back and forth. You know, who would write a 16-year-old shingle roof? You know, who would write a home with a pit bull or a Zinco panel or a water slide, a diving board, trampoline, right? All those things. And I said, there's got to be a better way to do this because it, it, it it's not just the one piece. It's when you have to mix it with the other pieces that makes it complicated. And I used to stand there and watch my team flip through a three ring binder, right, of each page looking for the, the, the OK, let's see. It fits in the dwelling. It fits in. Oh, no, nope, got to go to the next page. And and here in Florida, you can be appointed with 30 or 40 homeowner carriers, so it really, it, it, it was really a frustration. And the more frustration is, is the agent believed that they couldn't write the risk. Later to find out we lost the client to another agent down the street that wrote it with the carrier that we already were appointed with. Oh, wow. So, Ouch. So that's where, yeah, so that's where the birth came from. And I called up a buddy of mine. He was a guy that built websites, but he was always good at building kind of like a database on the back end. I called him up and I said, hey. I got this program I want to build. Can we do it? And he goes, let's do it. So uh, my, my, he's now my CTO. His name's Josh Mirabella. So quick shout out to him. Thank you. Couldn't done it without well, let him. Let me ask a quick question right here. So basically you were like, here's an opportunity to write a policy. What carrier mm-hmm. would take it? Yeah. Well, well who would write the risk? Yeah. Who would write the risk. That That's kind of was the kernel problem. Correct. Okay. Please continue. Because you can, you can rate a property, right? You can get a premium for it. You can run it through your raters and spit it all out. It could be the best price, but they might not write a trampoline or a 16-year-old roof. And sometimes those aren't rating factors. Those are underwriting factors. So my system is is very complementary to a rater, or if you don't have a rater, just quoting inside the carrier. Um, even the carrier, which it, 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 it blows my mind that 
they don't ask these questions as part of the quoting process on their website. So you run through, you get the quote, then you still have to submit things to the carrier or call them and be like, hey, are you going to be okay with this? Because when they come out to inspect the home and they see that there's a pit bull, are you going to cancel the policy? And then we have to rewrite it again. That, that was the frustration. It was the, the, the binding of the policy, rewriting it, and trying to find who would write it based on the underwriting. Or as they like to say in the technology world, that was the problem. Correct. <laughs> so then what happened? So... We launched Fetch about three months later at our association conference called FAIA, the Florida Association of Independent Agents, in June of 2019. So, and from there, uh, we have found it, you know, they talk about being an entrepreneur. There is no straight line. You know, you it, it, it was a rough ride. It was a roller coaster, right? It was uh, ups and downs and twists and just trying to get the system running right and, and getting it built out. And, and mainly we started in Florida because of this frustration, but we wanted to build it out so we could scale it nationally. Uh, and so that is kind of our next step. What does it do? Is it, is it connecting parties together? Is that right? So I have a team of people every day go into the carriers that we have access to and pull out any bulletins, guideline updates, filter change or any type of underwriting change, pull that down, and then we upload it in our system. So what you'll do is you would come to Fetch, you would type in your address, which again, I can't believe carriers don't have this where it populates the address as you type it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you start to type one, two, three, four, Happy Street, and then it finishes it, Clearwater, Florida. through the So you do that, you hit enter, and then so now it starts doing a search. It's going like, okay, so you're in Florida, you're in this city or county, what carriers will write that? Right. So you could have 50 uh, carriers in there and now you're down to 45 um, based on the county. Uh, and then you say, OK, well, the value of the property is or the dwelling a value is 600,000. OK, so now you're going down to 35. Then you say, OK, it's got a pit bull, a Zinco panel, a 16 year old, uh, three shingle roof with a diving board. Boom three carriers. And so then you get those three carriers and you're like, okay, this one, they'll do a DP3 to an HO3. This one will do an HO8. What do I want to do? Okay. The HO8 I'll do, I'll click it, go into the website, quote it up, ready to go. So is this a tool for independent agents to go in and figure out where they can actually sell the agent, you know, the, the where the they can place or? the business. Correct. Where they can right. place the business. Because right. normally the, the process would be they'd put it in the Raider, they get the 15 or 20 carriers, then they look at the cheapest one or the, or the best priced, obviously, right? And then they go, okay, well, they write it. Then they go open up their three ring binder or look at their Excel spreadsheet. And, and the hard part for me with my agents were I look down at their three ring binder and I'd be like, this, this guideline was printed in 2016. I go, I'm pretty sure they've updated it in the past five or six years. And mm -hmm. later, lo and behold, they have and, and changes have been made. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you kind of get locked into what – it, it, you get kind of locked in that this is what the carrier does, even though they make changes all the time. Is it a common problem for the independent agent that they'll t take the list of 15, they'll find the cheapest one, they'll go to ride it, and then the carrier comes back and says, I didn't know they had a pit bull. Correct. That's a or they didn't know problem. they had a diving board. Yeah, they didn't uh -huh. know they had a diving board. You know, they go out and inspect homes. Uh, they do post inspections at post buying inspections. And so they go out and they'll take a picture and there's the diving board. The next thing you know, you're getting an email from the underwriter going, you got to remove the diving board, send more pictures to show us it was removed or we're going to cancel the policy. So right. it just added more frustration. Right. So this makes the agent save time and be way more successful. Because Correct. they're not having these carriers come back and saying, no, 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 no. Or right. we have to re-rate the price or whatever it is. That's right. Nobody wants to really pick up the phone and call the underwriters for everything, right? Or e it just becomes another like step, right? So if you have 10 carriers, you're going to have to pick up the phone and call each carrier to find out if they'll write the diving board or you'll have to look through the guideline. And it's just like, it's so time consuming. Some of my users tell me they say five to 10 hours a week by just using fetch. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. So is there a filter setting? So if I'm an independent agent, I might only be contracted with a couple of different companies is, I mean, does this show me everybody and am I able to write with everybody or do I have to only look for those I'm contracted with? The ones that you're contracted with. So we have an appointment page where you go in okay. and you choose the carriers you're appointed with. I see. So it only shows you those. 
Right. Correct. Is it strictly PNC or is Correct. it all lines? It's mainly homeowners. There's flood and umbrella and condo. And they're also, we're working on mobile home and a couple other things. And, and we're thinking about going into that commercial world. Um, but man, that's a, that's a whole nother beast for sure. Yeah. And we is. feel that there is still a lot of need for the, the homeowners market, especially on the coastal states. Right. That have significant cat risk. And the carriers are always changing it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, just, you know, just to give you some uh, information, I'll tell you how many changes. I, I think it's like 212 changes we have made in just the past 30 days in Fetch. Wow. So does somebody pay? They, it's a, I, I assume it's a subscription. Correct. And so they just they have it sitting on their desktop and they can use it whenever they need it. It sits there and they pay a monthly fee or do they pay by use or, or what's the fee arrangement? So it's web based. So you can log in anywhere. It's ninety seven dollars a month for the first user and ten dollars for each additional user mm -hmm. per month. Thirty days. Uh, cancel any time. Pretty pretty straightforward. We don't put long-term contracts and all that sort of stuff. We want people to go in, we want them to use it and save them time. Now, an agent in Boise, Idaho is going to mm -hmm. be mostly concerned about selling policies in Boise, Idaho. Correct. So can you help them? We can. So in the states that we don't have the guidelines in, we ask the agents. And so that's part of part of our crowdsourcing product is that agents send us information, carriers send us information. We compile it all. We, you know, that's all very unstructured and we structure it into a system that makes it easy to search. So if you're in Boise, Idaho, and you've got, you know, five homeowner carriers, you send me the guidelines, we upload those filters for you. And now it's easy to search, easy to use. And how do you go about getting agents to use your product in Boise, Idaho, the, the kind of the other side of it. So, so you find one, that agent helps you gain a bunch of data and information, mm -hmm. and now you have it. How do you go and get the rest of the market? How do I get the rest of the carriers or how do I get to the other agents? Agents. Be on great podcasts like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I, I'm telling you, your company's about to take off in the wildest of ways. So get ready. I love it. Rocket I love ship. it. I'm ready. To, I'm mm -hmm. ready to ride that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, is it an Elon Musk rocket rocket ship or uh, Jeff Bezos? No, more like the one that your nine year old made that's in the backyard that he swears to you is going to fly. More yeah, like that, that he one. Glues the, he glued the cone to it so it, the parachute mm -hmm. never came out and it yeah. became a dagger into the ground. That one? Yeah, okay. One. Yeah. <laughs> More like that one. So what do carriers think of you? They've been hesitant in a way some at the beginning. They were, they were concerned. They were like, well, this is proprietary information, you know, that we don't write pit bulls. And I was like, what? It, it, it's not really. No. And so they said, well, this, you know, we keep our guidelines protected. I said, well, OK. I go, let me just Google it real quick. And I Google their name and the guidelines. And miraculously, there's the PDF on Google. I said, you know, it, it takes some convincing. I said, if anything, this is really going to help your agents not send a bunch of junk through you that you're just going to deny anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're they're strongly getting on board now where we're getting we have about five or six carriers we're talking with right now that are ready to closely pull the trigger and that they're going to help manage their data now. So we built this oh, portal wow. for them so they can go and make the updates. Ah, wonderful. You love that, yeah. right? That's the true part of this is that we want to bring all those carriers around central location to dump the data in and then agents to be able to access that same information across the board. Right. And it has to be a good thing for a carrier to write a policy that's going to stick, right? That's right. Instead, instead of for it to be a problem. That's right. Because it costs them a lot of money when you run a quote through them. It, you know, they it costs them money for the underwriter to look at it and they toss the money to cancel the policy that they're never going to make a dime on. So mm -hmm. it's it's to better their risks based on what they and their matrix of data of what they want to write. Is there any revenue? On that side from the carrier? Do they pay me? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. There's there's a whole price range of products that they can do uh, along from, you know, if they want to advertise to if they just want to access their data. What are they paying you? I mean, are, are, is that also a subscription? And what are what are they buying from you? So what they're buying is the fact that they can help partner with Fetch. 
be a part of it, be a part of the system. They can even use it almost internally. Some of the carriers we're talking to right now are looking to build this inside for all their underwriters because I'll sit there and I'll call an underwriter and they'll give me a different answer than if I pick up the phone and call back again and get a different one, right? So it helps streamline their internal underwriters as much as their agents who are almost like an external underwriter, right? So we kind of underwrite the risk for them. We pre-underwrite it. Well, I'm just thinking there's probably many of these companies who write the policy. Uh, so maybe at the end of all of the questions, there's five or six companies. Well, maybe maybe there's a way to promote one of these companies to be like the number one sponsor, like, hey, out of these five, you know, pick this one. I think it's a great revenue generating company. I think that it has a lot of a lot of big upside. And I think the future is there for you because right now you're only on the homeowners, but it, it could go so much further. What's even more interesting is, I mean, is there a way to actually write the, you know, to actually bind the policy through Fetch? Is that is that there right now? So the cool part about Fetch is we wanted to we wanted the user to put in the minimalist amount of information as fast as they can to get a really strong answer. And you can't do that like you can when you quote with them. When you quote with them, you're putting 50 pieces of data in, right? right. With us, you're putting the address and then you know, five or six filters where you just click a button, right? So it takes 15 seconds to do. Now it's taken your 50 carriers down to three. So now you go in and, and, and do the process. So this is just kind of like a quick, like fast overview. Here are the carriers that you're probably going to most likely write with. I mean, it's obviously very straightforward, but also a, a, a fabulous idea. Talk to us about the, how it's how has it caught on? You said you're you're a little more than a year in market. We're about we're in our third year now, I guess, because we started in 2019. A lot of it's word of mouth. I'd have to say strongly. We have mm -hmm. uh, we've just partnered with our association, which is FAIA Member Services. So it's a a division where you get. It took us about a year um, vetting process to get through there, um, and then they kind of put their seal of approval. Mm -hmm. uh, stamp right on the system. So uh, we're launching some stuff with them and, you know, going to these association uh, functions and things and getting getting people involved and, and signing up and trying it out. It, we, we have about 1300 users right now. So wow. do you really? it's not too shabby. Yeah, no. that's awesome. Congratulations. That's, that's amazing. Just, you know, from the seat of your pants, that's uh, a pretty remarkable thing. What about bundling? I mean, that has to be an enormous opportunity for you, or is that not that I, I assume in Florida bundling isn't as common as maybe some of the other states, but how are you approaching that? Uh, yeah, with the bundling, there's not as much, I guess, underwriting when it comes to auto, when you look at it. Sometimes there's a couple questions out there, but there's there's not really as much as the bundling, but it's just more of the underwriting of the particular risk. And, and we haven't come across that yet. Right now in Florida, we're looking to bundle uh, to show things about flood, right? So when you're putting that yeah. information in, it's similar information that you need for the flood policies. Uh -huh. And in other states as you go, what kind of pressure or things are you discovering about agents and how they look at their business in other states versus how they look at their business in Florida, which is its own unique universe of insurance. Correct. Uh, again, our product is probably a little stronger for those who have 10, 15, 20 plus carriers um, mm -hmm. where you have to do a lot of that. I know in, in some states, you just need two or three carriers and you pretty much have the market, right? You have like mm -hmm. a Safeco and a Travelers because they'll do the home auto umbrella boat. They'll do, you know, mm -hmm. so those states maybe not, but the, the great part is with this product is they could put in those three, they could do the homeowner search and it might kick one of them out and they're not going to spend any time going through and quoting it. Mm -hmm. Are you working with the MGA market at all? So the hard part with the MGA market is they're not very good at sharing the underwriting data. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to just say, oh, we'll write anything. And then I put it in and then every time the agent goes to them, they say, well, we aren't going to write it because it has pit bull. Well, you got to tell us that we have to put that in the system. And so I, don't, I didn't really want to junk the system up too much with MGAs. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently talking to a couple right now, more of a national MGA to say, hey, if we can get some of here, here are our filters. Can you push, can you say yes and no to these filters? And if you mm -hmm. can, then let's put it in and, and move forward. Because there are mm -hmm. some products out there that that you can search like uh, groups of MGAs to see who will write the risk. And 
I've called them before and they've said, oh no, we, we don't, we don't even write that product. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, okay. <laughs> I don't, so did you bootstrap in. fetch yourself or have you raised money? I mean, how, how, how's that side of it work? Yeah. So I put all the money in myself. I pay to work for Fetch. (laughs) 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 That's, that's kind of the joke, but, uh, no, our, our revenue numbers, I mean, we're up, I I can't even tell you, like, I think it's 150% from this year over last. So Mm -hmm. we are, we are growing by leaps and bounds. Um, and hopefully we'll get to a, a great place and get into more States. And I've got, I've got a great agent out of South Carolina, that's sent me all his guidelines and he has just been very strong with me. I have one out of Texas that's been really helpful uh, to help me get that together. New York, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut. And so I'm just kind of picking agents in those states that are really, really helping me get that feedback and, and understand what they need. Is there any need to get more data than just the the guidelines? Is there a reason to go outside of that ecosystem and have more data come in that that would help? Or is that basically it? Basically, as long as you have these guidelines, you're able to say, yeah, it, you know, it'll work. The guidelines don't always have the all the information. It doesn't show a full picture, even though mm-hmm. the carriers will give you a four page guideline. What we've done is we've the filters we have are about, I think, 17 filters we have now. Those 17 filters have been kind of curated based on nine times out of 10 agents need to find this answer. I right. See. So roof age, dwelling a year built, uh, you know, a lot of those filters I talk about, electrical panel, HVAC claims, losses, all those sort of things ha- are, are really important. The very minute things like they said, like, well, can you have one that tells me if you'll write it with a Benjamin Franklin stove? I'm like, you're the first person out of 100,000 searches we've done so far that's asked for that. So what I suggest you do is, is go through the filters we have get it down to the two or three. Now yeah. you're only calling two underwriters instead of calling 25 underwriters right. to find sense. that out. Right. It's still incredibly helpful. Those one-offs are always going to be there, especially in property, right? Well, and the cool part is in the system, you'll get it down to whatever you want. It'll show you the notes that we take directly out of the guidelines and put into the system for you to read very clearly all in the same place. But we also attach the guideline and make it what's called um, – OCR, optical character recognition. So you can open up that PDF, do control F and look for the word Franklin stove or stove and it'll highlight the word throughout the document. Oh, that's great. So one of the cool things is, is that we used to not have the guideline as a part of it, but this helps the one off. And the cool part is every day we go to all these carrier websites and we pull any guidelines. If we see a new guideline and update it, part of our subscription is you will get it in an email the following day. So it'll look for any guidelines that we've uploaded the next day, you'll get it. So it's just kind of like, hey, just an alert just to let you know we've updated the guidelines and we want to give it to you. And so we built a guidelines library. So it's got hundreds of guidelines in it. So you can search it by the carrier. You can use it on your smartphone and just be able to look up information at your fingertips. So I call it the three ring binder in my iPhone. I love it. So is your competitive moat that you're gaining all of this very particular data that really has to kind of come over time, right? I mean, you, you can't just say, I couldn't just say tomorrow, I'm going to contact these 20 insurers, get get this information and, uh, be, and, and compete with Fetch because Fetch has additional information and data beyond just, you know, what the, what the carrier has sent you. Is that correct? You guys are garnering and gleaning further data all the time. Your data is more complete. Is that what your cool. competitive mode is? Yes, we're structuring it all in one place. So carriers will be really funny. They'll build a guideline a year ago. And instead of updating the guideline and sending you that, they send you what's called a bulletin, right? So they either send it to you in an email or on their website, they'll flash it up there. Well, I mean, just like anybody in this industry, you get hundreds of emails a day, right? So it gets lost. So you forget to read it and make the change on the guideline. We actually check those bulletins every day and emails every day. We put the bulletins, we actually have a space for all the bulletins from the carriers, but we also go make the change on the back end for the carrier itself. So when you go to do the search, if they change the year, the roof, we've already updated it. You don't even have to worry about it. You just type in the roof age. We'll tell you if they'll write it or not. Let's talk for a minute about the future of Fetch. Where do you go from here? The roadmap is to grow nationally. 
we want to be able to be in as many states as possible that could really utilize our system. I'm looking for agents out there that really want to help out and really want to be kind of a, it's going to be a startup in their state, right? Want to, want to start with us and, and really partner with us and help us get some connections with carriers in those states that we might not have connections with here in Florida. I'm starting to see that we have trends now. We were trying to pass a bill in Florida and we actually had uh, legislators reach out to Fetch and say, hey, nobody can pull this data. Can you pull it for us? And we could. Wow. We were able wow. to see the trends of the roof ages changing over the past 12 months. So they were able to use that as leverage. So we're able to, I think we'll be able to see trends and concepts moving throughout the states to better understand for the agents where they're going and where the carriers are. That's awesome. You know, we're getting here close to time, but before we leave, I have to ask you about something on your resume. What is a brewery consultant? Obviously I drink beer because I mentioned that after I broke my foot. Um, right. I used to be a home brewer and I was very okay. big into craft beer. And so one of my niche markets as an agent was craft beer insurance. So I would uh, insure breweries. That's pretty fun. I think I think that's that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about Fetch. I think it has a place in our ecosystem and I'm excited to see the future of it. I think it's super interesting and I I love that a lot of times we have people on who come from a super tech forward background and you know have found their way into insurance because their unique technology does this but but yours is, I mean, it's Google-ish and that's not to take anything away from how technological Google is, but basically it was like, hey, I, I need some information on this and and Google gave it to you. And so I think that search engines, if you will, are a great proven product in, in our world. And uh, I love that. And this, I guess I can kind of maybe mention it on this podcast. I haven't really told a lot of people about it yet, but we are building an Ask Fetch Google-esque oh. version where now, because we're able to collect so much data from the carriers and from the agents that, the, that our machine is starting to kind of learn what things mean. So we are building kind of little a Google S bar where you'll be able to type uh, Pitbull and it'll show you all your carriers and then you can type the word 16 year old roof and then it'll show you. So you won't even have to pick the filters anymore. You'll just be able to type almost a sentence mm -hmm. and we that's hope awesome. to really launch that. I mean, that's kind of really our main launch that we're excited about. Yeah. Yeah. You left that off your roadmap. Well, it's there. I just don't know how to, get people to, I don't know. It, 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 yeah, I think it's I a think lot it, of learning. Google just didn't build in a day. <laughs> no, that's true. No. And it's, and it's not today what it was then. Yeah. I mean, we want people to, to make fetch work for almost all lines of business, mm -hmm. um, which is something we're always looking for. You know, what, what are those lines of businesses that, you know, like trucking, long haul trucking has been one, mm -hmm. uh, workers comp, you know, mm -hmm. so we're, we're, we're going in a lot of different directions. So we're just trying to figure out what that road is um, and make sure we're right now we're very strong in the homeowner's market, that personal lines. And I think we're going to kind of be there for a while um, okay. just to make sure we build that foundation correct. Because a lot of times these tech companies go all over the board, right? And then they get lost. And right. so just trying not to fall off well, the boat there. Con congratulations. We don't meet a lot Thank of boot bootstrapped insure techs, but you're one of them. And that's very cool. We'd love to have you back sometime, but you got to bring your nine-year-old since he's an experienced podcast. He's 11 now. Okay. But uh, right. yeah. We yeah, take 11-year-olds. The cool part is he asked me about this program the other day because uh -huh. he just hears about it. And I explained it to him. He goes, oh, that's that's pretty cool. He goes, can I try it? And I go, sure. And he did. And he goes, well, this is easy. What's so hard about underwriting risk? I go, this was made it easy. Like <laughs> you should have seen the way it was before. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I just want to tell everyone out there, they can sign up for free for Fetch, do a seven-day trial, go to fetchuw.com. Um, and they can just put in their name and email. I don't ask for credit card, none of that. Just go in there, try it out, just enjoy it. And then uh, if they want to move forward, it's $97 a month for the first user. Great. Well, thank you very much. We've learned a lot and uh, look forward to having you back again another time. I would love it. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Rob. Again, Lee, I just really like products that are super practical. Yeah, that one is. Very practical. Maybe not, yeah. maybe not overwhelming 
from a technology, oh my, wow, isn't that cool, but from a practical, usable? Well, yeah. I mean, what is the saying? Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, they know what they're doing. They're keeping it simple. It's not all this crazy technology that's bringing everything into a database. I mean, it's simple and it's, yeah. and it's needed and it's out there. And I could yeah. see how independent agents need to know those things because if you have 20 20 companies you, you could write through, well, that's a lot of applications. So Right. It would have never been important to your father, right? who was right. a state it, farm agent, but to a large independent agency? Yeah. Uh, wow. Very much so. Yeah. So, uh, really appreciate him coming on today. Yeah. We thank Trace for being with us, fellow podcaster and beer drinker. And we thank you for being with us as always. And until next time, we'll say to you. Goodbye, everybody. 